What are the two best DIY platforms for investors in the European area? Now I'm gonna answer that question in today's video. Now before answering that question, I'm gonna make some obvious points, but many people forget these obvious things. Now, first of all, the platform you invest in isn't as important as people think. So for example, you could have two investors on Vanguard.com and one investor is panicking during the financial crisis, another person isn't, and they get vastly different results. Likewise, you can have some investors who do really stupid things uh, like options trading or essentially speculation on some really good platforms and they do very badly. So which platform you're investing in is nowhere near as important as what you're investing in and especially um, you know, your emotional control when markets go up or down. Now with that being said, I've got two platforms I would recommend uh, if you're gonna be a DIY investor in Europe. One is Swissquote and one is Saxo Bank. The reason they're good is they're both in a 0% uh, tax uh, places, at least for non-residents of uh, Switzerland um, or indeed um, Denmark, uh, so they're tax efficient, whereas um, some of the Dutch uh, platforms like uh, Dirijo, which I've talked about before, maybe they don't have that same uh, aspect. And also some of the UK platforms like Hargreaves Lansdowne tend to only take UK residents. So they're much more tax efficient and they're much more uh, international as well. So whereas some of the platforms in Europe only accept for Europe, if you go from, I don't know, uh, Europe to Latin America, the likes of Saxo Bank are more likely to actually keep your account open than some of the other uh, platforms. With that being said though, if you're an expat, it often makes sense to have an expat specific portfolio as much as possible. And the final point I would make is this, and that's that essentially, unless you're one of the 10 or 20% of people who have the self-control to invest by yourself, you shouldn't actually do it in terms of I was looking at a Vanguard study, which was talking about um, you know uh, people who are using advisors versus DIY investing. I'll put the the link below, and a lot of people are surprised about the Vanguard research because they often think, oh, um, Vanguard they're a low cost uh, online company, so they'll support DIY investing. But what a lot of people don't realize is the founder of Vanguard, Jack Bogle, he himself became very skeptical about things like ETFs and DIY investing, not because he didn't believe it wasn't possible, but because when he's looking at the research, he found that most people are acting quite uh, emotionally. In other words, on one interview, he gave the example of how uh, there was loads of money coming into Vanguard in the 1990s when markets were going up. But in 1999, 2000, when markets crashed essentially, people panicked and they got out. And likewise in 2008, the same thing. So what often happens is even people who do things like say, all right, I'm gonna invest in Vanguard index funds through platform A, what they often do is they do the exact opposite of what they are advised to do by that very platform. So for example, Vanguard, as most people should know, advises a buy and hold strategy. Yet most people who invest in Vanguard by themselves do the opposite, even if they say they won't. I'll give you a great example. I was talking to a gentleman um, a couple of years ago, and uh, he told me he invested uh, in the Vanguard uh, platform, um, and um, you know he's been doing it for 20 years. And I thought to myself, wow, this is a guy who really has the emotional control to invest by himself. But do you know what he said five minutes later? He's like, oh, um, I didn't panic sell when Trump got elected, but I decided not to add to my portfolio. And the funny thing is that's very common. I was reading uh, some research by Fidelity uh, a few days ago, which showed 30%, yes, 30%, not 3% or 13%, 30% of over 65s panic sold during this year's market crash. So despite the fact they're not young, when you're 65, it's hard to come back from that. They panic sold. And that's just taking the people who panic sold. What about the people who didn't add money to their account? I would estimate from talking to most DIY investors that at least 70 or 80 percent of people either panic sell, try to time the market, or they kind of strategically try to decide when to put money in. So if something like Brexit happens, Trump, coronavirus, they think, oh, this time is different. And then they regret it a few weeks later. So I was talking to a gentleman on Skype a few uh, weeks ago and he joked to me, he said, I did the classic thing of panicking uh, during the March crisis, even though I told myself I wouldn't do it. And I've noticed it's similar to going to the gym. Everyone tells themselves on January 1st, they're gonna be self-disciplined, but maybe only 10 or 20% do it in reality. 
The same with investors. A lot of people pledge, oh, I'm just going to buy and hold. I'm going to buy every month for 20, 30, 40 years. But actions speak louder than words. And a lot of research out there shows that only about 20 to 25 percent of people maximum can actually do it in reality. Because it's easy to say you will do it. But let's say another financial crisis happens and your 500,000 portfolio is now worth 300,000. It's very easy in theory to say, well, of course, I would be the person who would wait it out and I would keep adding more money as the markets are down. But in reality, when it's all over the news and very intelligent people are saying this time is different, which they always say when there's a, a decline in the markets, would you really not panic?